A Pact with the Sun, Supplementary Reader in English for Class 6. Chapter 10 A Strange Wrestling Match, Part 2. Vijay Singh picked up a piece of rock from the sand. Take this, he offered it to the ghost. And squeeze it hard, it is filled with fluid. See if I am wrong. While the ghost tried to squeeze the rock first with one hand, then with both, Vijay Singh stealthily took out the egg from his pocket. Vijay Singh snatched the rock from the ghost and placed it between both of his hands and squeezed. At once, the yellow yolk oozed from around his fingers and the crackling of the eggshell created the illusion of the stone being crushed. The ghost was so astonished, he did not notice Vijay Singh bending to clean his hands with sand and disposing of the tell-tale shell. Vijay Singh then picked up another piece of rock and gave it to the ghost. Without a word, the ghost took it, felt it and peered at it. This is only a stone, protested the ghost. And anyway, it is too dark to see. Never heard of a ghost who can't see in the dark, remarked Vijay Singh. That stone which you hold in your hand contains salt. Crumble it and see. Again, the ghost tried to crush the stone, but in vain. He handed over the stone to Vijay Singh. The ghost was now beginning to doubt his ghostly powers. I can see that you're not going to be a worthy opponent. What's the use of wrestling with a weakling whom I can floor within a minute? So saying, Vijay Singh casually crumbled the lump of salt and let the stone drop in darkness. He held out his hand and commanded the ghost to taste the powdered stone. Mesmerized with the Pehlwan's extraordinary strength, the ghost did as he was told. Alarm shot through him. This man could easily vanquish him in a wrestling bout in the dark. But perhaps he could be tricked in another way. Assuming a servile manner, the ghost said, Friend Vijay Singh, it is an honour to meet a man like you. I admit to being defeated. But where will you go tonight? Rest in my house. You can leave tomorrow. Now, thoroughly elated, Vijay Singh replied, I cannot refuse your hospitality, but tomorrow you will go with me as my prisoner. I must display the trophy of my victory to my people. The ghost bowed in agreement, but silently bowed to kill Vijay Singh in the night. He led him to his house in the cave. The ghost fed him dry fruits and a lot of milk and later led him to a luxurious bed to sleep on, complete with pillows and bolsters. But Vijay Singh lay awake listening to the snores of the ghost. In the middle of the night, he slipped off his bed. He placed a bolster in the center of the bed, throwing over it a coverlet to make it look exactly like a sleeping man. Having done this, he crouched watchfully in a dark corner. Sure enough, just before the break of dawn, the ghost approached the bed armed with a stout club. He brought the club down on what he thought was Vijay Singh's head. Not even hearing a groan, he smiled, pleased that he had killed his enemy. However, just to make doubly sure, he struck the bolster six times more. Satisfied with his work, he returned to his couch and, covering his head, settled down to sleep again. Meanwhile, Vijay Singh crept silently back into bed. After a pause, he groaned, as if in disgust, threw back his coverlet and sat up. Disturbed by the noise, the ghost peeped from under his bedclothes to see the strong man stretching his arms above his head and yawning. For a moment, the ghost turned rigid with shock. Friend ghost, there are insects in your cave, 
said Vijay Singh in a complaining voice. Here I was, enjoying the sweetest sleep I've had in years, and there comes this insect to trouble me. I distinctly counted seven flappings of its wings. Of course, it has not bitten me, but it's most annoying. The ghost panicked. Those seven blows would have reduced any other man to pulp. There is no safety near a formidable wrestler like this, he thought, and fled from the cave, leaving behind all his ill-gotten wealth. It took several camels from the village to remove the property Vijay Singh had acquired. He returned much of it to the rightful owners. He went specially to the old woman, thanked her for her invaluable gift, and asked for her granddaughter's hand in marriage. Thenceforth, Vijay Singh was more careful about boasting. It is said that no traveller was ever troubled again in the haunted desert. Now let us check what you have learnt by answering a few questions. 1. How did Vijay Singh use the egg? How did he use the lump of salt? 2. Why did Vijay Singh conclude that the ghost would not be a worthy opponent to him? Was he fair in his judgment? 3. Why did Vijay Singh ask the ghost to accompany him to town the next day? 4. What made the ghost believe Vijay Singh was dead? 5. Vijay Singh complained of insects in the cave. What was he referring to and why? 6. Was it really a ghost who Vijay Singh befooled? Who do you think it was? <laughs> <laughs>